My name is Grant Wood. I'm a faculty member here at the University of Saskatchewan, or I should say I was a faculty member here at the University of Saskatchewan until I retired just a few months ago. Um, I, tell you, I, I taught courses in the uh, Department of Plant Sciences, College of Agriculture, and Bioresources. I'm kind of the odd duck out in the college and that my, my graduate work is a combination of both the natural sciences and the social sciences. In, in particular, I work in the area of, of horticulture uh, with ornamental plants and in particular with food. Uh, food is my passion and food production. Um, and I'm going to be talking today about food production um, at, the, at the university and just about food production in general. Why did I become a scientist? Um, it wasn't an intentional thing. It happened. Um, and I didn't become a researcher um, or a scientist. I became a teacher first. A former boss of mine, uh, when I was working for, saw in me the potential to teach and to help others learn. So he offered me a teaching job. So I started teaching, absolutely fell in love with teaching. So what I do as a teacher, I need to find information and, or, or, or create new information, create new knowledge and share that with others. Um, and in order for you to, to create new knowledge, what you're actually doing is being a researcher. Uh, the definition of a researcher is to gain and share understanding and knowledge uh, to work in the sciences, both either the natural sciences or the social sciences and to discover and to teach knowledge. So I became a teacher, and with that, I then became a scientist. Um, to identify the science, how, uh, as a scientist, how that, um, um, how I can be a scientist and be just an ordinary kind of dude in the, in the, at the same time. And as I say, my two lives are actually one. Um, I'm a very curious person. I see something and say, hey, I wonder how that works, or what created that? Or um, just, I want to learn, I want to expand my knowledge about things around me. Um, whether I'm intentionally learning or teaching, whether I'm on holidays, or just in my day-to-day -day life, walking with a friend who is for, well, works in a different area, and he'll say, hey, something about this vehicle. Hey, how does that work? So I'm learning all the time. So my, my teaching professional life and my personal life, the two of them are always working together. I always have a camera with me, I take pictures, I'm a visual learner, I learn best from seeing things. So I'm always taking pictures and I'm always trying to strive and help others learn, um, so learn from me. Um, and I, as I put down, I'm a lifelong learner and a lifelong teacher. Uh, sometimes I drive my kids crazy because their friends, my kids' friends will be over and I'll be, in essence, I'll end up teaching them something. Um, that's just because, no, that's who I am. I'm a lifelong teacher. So the two identities, they go hand in hand. Um, how has it changed my understanding of my place in the world? This is a tough question. Um, there's applied research and there's basic research. Applied research is the type of information, the type of research that is going to change the world. It's going to have a huge impact in the future, 10, 15, 50 years from now. The University of Saskatchewan does a lot of basic research and it's, it's, it's um, absolutely amazing stuff. But there's also applied research. And applied research is creating new knowledge or discovering knowledge for an immediate issue, to solve an immediate issue or to answer an immediate question. And that's what I do mostly is the applied research. How do you do that? First, find your passion and with time you will develop a passion. So find that passion and my passion is with food production, growing food, but it's not just the food growing of the food, it's like the mental health associated with growing food. How does it feel? Does it feel good when you are growing food, when you're with other people who are all together collectively growing food? If you're from another country, how do you um, um, integrate into the society more easily? Growing food is part of that answer. Community development. So find your passion, and mine is food, and then share that passion. As I say here, you know, you're not going to change the entire world, but you could change the world for one person at a time. 
Um, I'm going to be talking to you about food production. I'm going to talk about things that are not common just yet, but they're becoming common. There's a possibility that that will excite you and that you will become involved in that area. So I will have influenced you, I will have changed your world. Anybody, everyone, every last one of you has that potential. And that's where I want to you know, strive for that. But first, you know, find your passion and then follow that passion. And what's the next big scientific question? Well, for me, I think we know that the world's population is increasing. Um, those people need to live somewhere and they need food to eat. So the question is, we don't have, not all the Earth's surface is suitable for living or suitable for food production. So we're going to run out of space eventually. How can we produce food for people if there's no space left? So it's how we produce this food for this growing population. That is, I think, going to be one of the big, big uh, questions in the future. Thank you.